Hey, what's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Koenig Mini Arius non-flipper version. And the Mini Arius was already a grill knife for me, but I wasn't a huge fan, like a lot of people, of the placement of that flipper tab when the blade was deployed. I'm someone who really likes to get right behind the edge of a knife, past that pivot, and the flipper tab just got in the way of that. So when this flipperless version came out, I was pretty quick to jump on it. In fact, this one's from generation one back one and that's really easy to tell on this particular model because they stamp it right here on the inside of that show side handle and so if we flip this around you can actually see that without disassembling it by looking through the hole in the pocket clip and that gap between the frame lock and the frame itself and you should see G1 B1 I'm not sure how visible it is it's hard to tell on the viewfinder so I'm gonna get a light on there to get rid of any shadows that might be making it hard to see and hopefully we'll be able to see that G1 B1 in there so of course the G is for generation the B for batch and so BAS 2 will be G1, B2, and then B3, and so on and so forth. But I think this is probably the best looking knife in my modern knife collection. And that's obviously subjective, that's my opinion, but really as close to perfect as you can be in terms of design. This is a miniaturized version of the original Arius, which was a TJ Schwartz design with Bill Koenig. And so obviously a great looking knife. A lot of people are familiar with probably the flagship knife for Koenig. I don't think it was the first model, but the probably most popular one. And so it has a great design. I think the flow of this design is absolutely perfect, especially without the flipper tab, it just looks killer. And I always compare it to, I'm sure I'm not the first one to make this comparison, but when you watch like a Audi or BMW commercial and they're trying to show the aerodynamics of the car and so they show the wind blowing over the top, this, that's always what this kind of reminds me of. And so it just has kind of a fast feel to it, which I think looks great. The pattern on the handles is absolutely incredible. They call it the Corda pattern and it's just so subtle. I feel like almost any other knife company is gonna go with a much deeper, more textured, tactile, grippy kind of texturing. Even if they did this exact same pattern, it would be deeper and it would be more more grippy, it would almost feel aggressive. And this is so subtle. The raised portions are barely higher than the lower portions of the handle. And it creates this really cool effect. It looks great and it also feels great. It's not offensive where maybe if it was a little bit more grippy, it would feel you know, a little bit of a hot spot or warm spot as you're cutting with it for longer periods of time, you might feel that a little bit more, but this is so subtle, it doesn't really detract at all from the feeling of the knife. Love the blue accents. I had the opportunity to get one with bronze accents instead, but for me, I think titanium looks best with blue accents. I even did a short somewhat recently showing a bunch of my titanium knives with blue pivots. It's definitely my favorite combo, so obviously went with that version. And then the contouring on these knives, you can tell just the level of detail that goes in here. A lot of handles will have very symmetrical contouring that's the same on every line of the knife. Maybe you'll get something more pronounced in the finger groove here to get a little bit more access to that frame lock and they definitely do that here. But this one it feels like they treated each line individually and so you see more pronounced contouring up here by the pivot and it really draws your eye into there nicely more subtle here towards the back and really goes all into that overall flow of the knife. It also extends into the swedging. This has a very subtle swedge and that swedge does stop before the tip so we maintain some of that tip strength by stopping a little bit early but it feels very similar to the rest of the contouring of the knife and it's just a really nice touch overall so in terms of the size of this one and I should say, you know, all that's to be expected, including the action. The action on here is absolutely incredible. But for the price point, that's to be expected. I'm going to save the price for a little bit later in the video because I feel like that's going to be the main sticking point for most people. In fact, I'm sure it's going to be the sticking point. So don't want to detract from the rest of the conversation earlier on. So size wise, I think this is a perfect size. It's not that much smaller than the full size area. So I don't have one to compare it to, obviously. But this one comes in at seven and a quarter inches. So right in that sweet spot for me, I always say, I like between seven to seven and a half inches and this lands right in the middle. 4.375 inches on those handles. And that does allow you to get a nice four finger grip, extremely comfortable. But like I said a little bit earlier, I like to get right up behind that edge. And so you can see I'm getting dangerously close there. This is not a finger twill, so I'm right behind that edge, but I haven't run into any issues. I've never cut myself on this knife so far. And so really, extremely comfortable in this position. It allows you to spread your fingers out a little bit more, don't feel so cramped on it, and it's just an excellent feel in hand. You don't feel the pocket clip at all right here. Pretty short pocket clip, but disappears into your hand. 
comfortable in a lot of different grips. And so love the ergos on this. We have a three inch blade, although only a 2.875 inch cutting edge, as you can see from that choil. And so nice size on there, 3.23 ounces is what I weighed this one in at. So if there's a kind of downside, it's the weight to blade length ratio that a lot of people like to see. And it doesn't feel heavy in hand or in pocket though. So it rides in both very, very nicely. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. Really nice access to this thumb hole, which is great because we don't have the flipper tab as our secondary deployment. But you can see it's got this elongated thumb hole here and it's great for spidey flicking. I feel like this is a very natural position and so that's definitely my preferred opening mechanism. And it's such a satisfying open, but I feel like a lot of knives have satisfying open. What's really satisfying on this one for me is the closing action. It's on caged ball bearings and the tolerances are just so perfect that it feels like there's no resistance whatsoever. And some knives you have to kind of shake to get it the rest of the way. This one, it's most satisfying when you just let gravity do its job, especially that last like 10% or so. It's hard to, you know, you can't show it, but if you've ever handled one, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. It has like this suction at the end and a click when it closes that just feels so satisfying. So I don't actually like to kind of shake this one shut. I like to let it just kind of drop and let gravity do its work, but really, really well done. And I think that's what kind of sets it apart in terms of pricing, obviously a lot of attention to detail and the tolerances on here are just so well done. It's made in Boise, Idaho. So American made, it's got a lifetime warranty, all the stuff that you kind of expect with a premium knife, but they really didn't miss a beat, which every once in a while, even with these expensive knives can happen. For me, this is as close to perfection as you can get. There's really no flaws that I can point out with. It's right hand tip up carry on the pocket clip, but I really do like the pocket clip and it's this kind of shallow pocket clip, which I was a little bit worried about. It's such an expensive knife. I'm worried about this one falling out of my pocket, but I've never had that happen. And so probably less of a worry now. And it's not reversible, but that's kind of, again, to be expected with these more premium knives. I don't want to take away from the aesthetic by adding screw holes here for the pocket clip. So a lot of times what they'll do is just offer a left-hand model. Now I've never shopped for a left-handed model, but I'm sure it exists because obviously they're only right-handed in this configuration, but I, I'm sure they exist because most of these premium companies make both left-handed and right-handed models. Really, really stellar job on these. So I think for me, I want to talk about the price point, but I really wanted to wait until I was kind of past that honeymoon phase because, you know, you spend that amount of money on a knife. I feel like you're more likely to like it. You're also more likely to nitpick. So if there was one small thing you didn't like, you may talk yourself into selling it, but you're more likely to really be enthusiastic about it early on. And I was also carrying it early on, but I wasn't doing all that much cutting with it. And so once you get past that honeymoon phase, you can probably see I have a little mark on my pivot starting to get snail trails along the edges. Once you get past that honeymoon phase, you're really willing to use it for the same things you use your other knives for. And so that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm pretty easy on my knives anyway. I work an office job. It's cutting cardboard, tape, mail, tags, rope, that sort of thing. Nothing too crazy. So I'm pretty easy on my knives, but not so worried about this one getting banged up anymore. And I don't think I've even mentioned the price point. I was getting close early on, but I paid table price for this, which was $855. At the time, it was the most expensive knife I had ever purchased. And it's still the second most expensive knife I've ever purchased. So not, you know, really at the top end of my range. Even now, you know, I've said this before when my range was $500, I can't imagine it going much higher than it is now. So this is really the kind of top grail knife that I feel like I'm ever going to get to. And a lot of that, you know, is possible because of YouTube. It's YouTube's a hobby for me. I make a little bit of money off of it, but knives were also a hobby for me. And if I weren't making that extra money off YouTube, I probably wouldn't have been able to justify spending this much on a knife, even if I could have afforded it. But now I feel like it's a little more justifiable. I don't think it's something I'm going to do very often, but I don't regret purchasing this at that price point. But I will say this is long past, even for an American made knife, long past the point of diminishing returns. There are a lot of things that are just subtle things that are 5% better than a $500 knife or 2% better than a $500 knife. Maybe the looks I like a little bit better than, but 
it probably doesn't justify the cost if you're not an extreme enthusiast. There's no reason to buy this if you're just looking for a utilitarian knife. You know, this is kind of a love letter to the knife community is what it feels like to me. And so I'm absolutely happy that I purchased it, happy to have it in my collection. But I don't know that it really justifies that cost. And I'm sure there's going to be people who are saying you're dumb for buying a knife this expensive. And maybe that's true. I'm very fiscally responsible despite what it might look like from my YouTube channel. I wouldn't have bought something that I can't afford. I don't use credit to make purchases. And so it definitely, you know, it hurt to buy this, but it definitely still feels worth it at the same time. And that's kind of why, you know, it took me so long to make this video because I really didn't want to the price to be as much of a factor in my thoughts on this knife because I felt like it was near perfection and I still feel that way seven months after purchasing this knife. And so just kind of wanted to wait that out. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Won't hurt my feelings if you say it's absolutely not worth that price. But absolutely love this one. Hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you did enjoy the video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, or joining the channel as a member all help the channel out a ton, and as usual, hope you have a great one. Take care.